On September 1st, Coach Joe Kennedy will be back on the field where he belongs. And we want you to enjoy the freedom the Supreme Court protected. Hi, I'm Stuart Shepard, and this is First Liberty Live. Thank you for liking and sharing these videos. This is one you're going to like and you're going to want to share. I've got our Executive General Counsel, Hiram Sasser, here, as well as my good friend, Joe Kennedy. Hi, Hiram. Hi, Joe. Hey. Hello. Joe, it was just over a year ago that we, all of us together, and especially you, won at the Supreme Court a, a major victory. And the court said Americans have the right to n take a knee after a game and say a prayer on the 50-yard line if they want to. Tell us what you've been doing over the past year. What's been going on with you? Just catch us up. Wish I could say it's all been fun and games. I have actually I've been studying uh, what's coming up for the football season. It's a whole new playbook. We got a whole new coaching staff that's there, yeah. and trying to get my basically my life in order, getting ready to uh, go back up to Washington State and to be there in my first game. Yeah, and you've been hanging out with family in the meantime. I mean, we shared a bit of that along the way and taking care of of, of relatives, loved ones. Yep, down there with my dad down in Pensacola. Uh, been able to take a lot of cool trips and uh, see part of the world that I think everybody should go if you haven't had a chance to go to Israel. Highly recommend it. Yeah, awesome place. Very cool. I saw a photo of you floating in the Dead Sea, and I've always wondered what that feels like when you're out there in the water, just kind of bobbing up and down. Is it, It's not like a lake, right? Or is it? It's just like a lake. It's just a really, really warm one, and uh, yeah, you float. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's like you got your water wings up. <laughs> in the years in between, and, and you mentioned this just a moment ago, the team has changed. All the kids have changed. Uh, the coaching staff has largely changed. I think there's some that that are, that are still there. I just want to compliment you on the courage it takes to slip back into your role at Bremerton High School because all of us know that has to be impossibly awkward to try to make this work after the Supreme Court said you get to go back. The only thing you ever asked for in the lawsuit was your job back, and that's what you're getting, right? Yep. That seems like a very simple ask. That and to be able to just thank God after the football game. That's all I ever wanted. And Really, the principle behind it is is exactly that. Yeah. How's it, how's it working out between you and the coaching staff? Is are things okay? They're very cordial. I, I really love the coaching staff. I got to meet all of them. We had our coaching meeting during during the springtime of this year, and it was the elephant in the room that nobody wanted to talk about. Yeah. And uh, we just, I'm very graciously just talked about football, and it was uh, very professional. So. We all know we're in a weird situation, and I just hats off to them that the coaching staff has been very professional about it. I get the impression that, that everybody's just agreeing to work through this, that that's what needs to be done. And, and that's I want to praise them for doing that because it's hard for them, too. So we give them props for that. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I wish the school I felt more um, welcome from the school district. But yeah. Maybe they'll see their the ways one of these days. Now, I hear there's a book coming out soon and a movie soon after that. Tell us a little bit about the book. What can we expect? Really, it's just a breakdown of my life. It goes back to before I was born, uh, unwanted pregnancy. It's amazing how something like that could turn into something like this way in the future. If I was never born, this never would have happened. So it goes through my childhood, talks about really about who I am, where I came from, about my family, my wife, uh, our relationship. So it's a really good, I think it's a really good love story and huh. really just shows you the incredible fingerprints that God has on your life from, from the very beginning, even though you don't realize it when you're in the middle of the fight. What's it called? The Average Joe. The Average Joe. Cool. And when's it come out? That'll be out in October. So you could get it on Amazon right now, pre-sales. It'll be available in hardback, Kindle, and audiobook. Very cool. And the movie? Movie they are going to be shooting in this September. And they're going to be they're out scouting locations. I can't give away who's playing who yet. Yeah. We're still looking for somebody for Hiram, but... <laughs> Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. <laughs> well, it would be I mean, perfect. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's what I said a long time yes, ago. I was trying to put that was. in, you know. But yeah. I don't know. We'll see if he's available. Yeah. I think that'd be a perfect fit. And so it'll come out sometime next year. Is what right. I mean. Yeah. And they're going to go up uh, for the first game and they'll take some live action shots up there and really tie it all into the, how to end the movie well.
Now, now we've had a friendship that goes back a few years now. How weird is it that they're making a movie about you when you're in the middle of that? Oh, that's just beyond weird. I mean, you guys know me. We, we, they've been together for, I don't know you want to say how long. It's a decade a, is way too, yeah. too long to know you guys. So, yeah, I think we know each other pretty darn well. And you know my life. So it, does it seem like it's newsworthy? Not really, but I guess... I, I mean, the New York Times did do a, a, a very long podcast about your life. I mean, that's that's kind of a big deal. Yeah, that, that was kind of cool. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward. I will be buying tickets for it. Might see it a couple of times. Might buy the DVD. You never know. It'd be cool. <laughs> I'll watch it with you. Looking forward to it. Hiram, First Liberty has won many times at the U.S. Supreme Court, but I get the impression that this one was, it was kind of special to you. Tell me why. Well, I, I mean, this was, this was a case that was just an adventure. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I was there at the game on October 16th, 2015. And, uh, um, you know, where we, you know, were trying to do the right thing. He was trying to pray by himself and the other team surrounded him. And, but, uh, you know, I never expected this to last that long. You know, Coach was just right before we got on air here was kind of giving me a hard time because I told him it'd last about three weeks and that'd be the end of it. And uh, here we are eight years later, uh, finally, you know, getting to fulfill that three-week promise. Uh, but it's um, what what I found interesting about this is that I always thought it was a relatively simple and easy case. Seems like it. But we kept losing over and over and over again seven times who's counting yeah. but it was seven times well i'm glad you brought that up because you know <laughs> coach would call me and was like you know you realize we're like oh and five hey, you realize like we're like oh and six now and uh you know it's uh it it it, it was it, i felt like i was responsible for uprooting his entire life and i wanted to patch it back together and I want, and, and that that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, is get it get it back back to the way it was supposed to be, and uh, uh, that was a it, it, it was tough. And I and and to be able to get it back, you know, going back to the game again, you know what I mean? That just seems to me to be uh, I don't know a, a big deal. I, I I don't know that I care that much about the court stuff. It's just about getting him getting coach back getting his life back getting him back on the field i don't know that just that was that's what this case was about to me and and so we we haven't done that yet and we're going to get to do that in september and that's really cool september 1st and, and i'm hoping to be there at the field when that happens oh We've, you guys have to be yeah. oh, i'm going to be there yeah i'll buy a shirt and everything i, mean, <laughs> I want to <laughs> I need one of those. I'm going to be complaining about the blocking scheme. Just like last <laughs> yes. Is that the Wildcat <laughs> offense? What is going on? First Liberty is launching a campaign to encourage players and coaches all over America to, and we're saying it figuratively, take a knee with Joe, to, to enjoy this new freedom that you won for everyone, all Americans, at the Supreme Court. Hi, my name is Coach Joe Kennedy. I just want to take a moment to thank everybody that is contributing to the National Night of Prayer on September 1st. We're going to be having our first football game. It's my first one back. And I encourage everybody, if you're not already attending a football game, to sign up, go to a game, take a knee on the 50-yard line, and be thankful for God, the country, and anybody else that you want to be thankful for. I really appreciate you guys expressing the Constitution of the United States, and I look forward to seeing and hearing from every one of you. The Constitution that probably had the best language in the world uh, about religious liberty and free speech was the old Soviet Union Constitution. <laughs> uh, it had the best language, way better language, way more specific language, protective language than the U.S. Constitution. W but there was no freedom there because yeah. the, the rights were meaningless. They were just on paper. They didn't mean anything. Uh, the only thing that gives life and breath to the U.S. Constitution are Amer everyday Americans exercising their rights to the fullest. If they don't exercise their rights, it doesn't matter what the Supreme Court said. It's irrelevant. And so we're really hoping that everybody in America who wants to, and it doesn't matter what their faith is or whatever, 
any faith, to exercise their freedom to be able to take a knee and say a prayer uh, when they're in public, whether it's on the football field, uh, if it's a teacher uh, in the classroom praying over their 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 meals or taking time to pray for their students, you know, while their students are doing other things. I mean, we just want the everybody to be able to feel like they can now exercise these rights. And so we're asking that everybody participate. And, and look, it's uh, it's not 2015 anymore where Coach Joe is sort of going out into the abyss, right? Taking a big leap of faith. Uh, we've, we've got, we've already, we've won the right. You know, we overturned 50 years of Supreme Court precedent that was sort of intimidating everybody into silence and to self-censorship. And so this is just a great opportunity for everybody to exercise their rights and to live out the freedoms that are guaranteed by the Constitution. And, and I keep hearing voices on the other side. They act as if there was no Supreme Court victory. It's like, well, you, you, you kind of won, but you didn't really win because, you know, everything's still the same way it was. The only way to demonstrate that this is a freedom guaranteed under the Constitution is to exercise that freedom. Yeah, you know, the thing that I found fascinating about about this this case, and I don't know if you found this fascinating, but how many people were following it? Like how many people? It got pretty big. I mean, it, and, and how many people probably were coming to the first game, September 1st? Yeah. And I think that a lot of people just didn't feel like they could, you, know, you could acknowledge your faith in public and that that would be okay. And for someone to actually step out and go do it and then win after all that time, I think it's just a, it's just a great testament for and, and testimony for everyone else that you know you can go exercise your rights too and and i don't know this may be one of the most well-attended bremerton knights football games they've had in a long time <laughs> you know i hope they're ready joe what's your encouragement to people who might feel a little reluctant to take a knee and say a prayer alongside you figuratively all over the country well, i really believe that this is a perfect opportunity for people to actually just take a deep breath and to relax and to know that they are covered this is not a big deal this is the way it's been designed from the very beginning and we're just kind of like what i saying we're, we're resetting the clock you're going to be able to go have an evening out go enjoy football think your parents, your coaches, your educators, just be, go out there and just be, have a moment of silence or have a moment of prayer or whatever you want to call it. Just have a moment on that evening and just be thankful for being an American and ex exercise those rights. It's going to feel really good when you do it. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing a lot of people taking advantage of this freedom that you've won. Yeah, it was already there, but you won it back, if you will, what was already in the Constitution for all of us. Anything else you guys would like to share before I let you go? I just think it'd be really cool. People across the whole entire nation, I mean, September 1st, everybody in America have a national night of prayer and have everybody on a football field doing it. I think that would just send a loud, resounding message that, hey, we're not being pushed around anymore. And we're going to be able to stand up on our own. Outstanding. Uh, Joe, Hiram, thank you for making some time for us. Always great talking to you. Glad you're here. Thanks for having us. Joe, I'm really buddy. proud of you and all that you've done through these years. I know it's been tough, but we're proud of you and we're cheering for you. Thanks, buddy. And we'll be on the sidelines. Let me encourage you to enjoy your freedom. Be part of the First Freedom Challenge and take a knee with Coach Kennedy. If you'd like to learn more about this thing that we're talking about, you can go to it's our Restoring Faith in America uh, website. It's RFIA for Restoring Faith in America, RFIA.org. And there will be some hashtags on there that you can put on the photos that you take. We encourage you to take those just so that people around the country know that we are doing this together and it's a freedom that we all can enjoy because that's the way the founders wanted it to be. First Liberty is fighting for what matters most.